Hey guys, Chris here, the RC Geek. Welcome back. One of the questions I get quite often at shows and events is, you know, what kind of batteries do I use in my aircraft? I've been flying larger EDFs and electric warbirds for a long time, and you know, good quality batteries are essential to performance. There are tons of choices out there, and so I thought I'd provide a little discussion on the batteries that I like to use, uh, and then what I go for in terms of C rating. There's most certainly a balance between efficiency and performance due to the extra weight of higher C rated packs. And so we'll talk about that a little bit too, uh, along with some general practices I use in maintaining battery performance because you know a well-kept battery is a good performing battery. Now, as we get into this, uh, I just wanna mention up front that you know this discussion is all based on personal experience uh, and practical use in the field using all sorts of batteries over the last decade or more. I'm not doing any heavy side-by-side -side current testing or voltage testing or anything like that. Uh, just relaying what has worked for me uh, as I've used all of these different types of batteries. At the end of the day, you know, the best batteries and methods are the ones you're happy with and work for you. With that said, let's go! First off, to answer the question of what batteries I use, you know, for the last year plus, uh, I've been exclusively using Roaring Top batteries. I'm sure you've been seeing them in some of my previous videos. I started out trying a couple packs in some airplanes, and I've since converted most everything over uh, to the Roaring Top packs, and I've been extremely happy with them. The build quality is extremely nice, and the performance is excellent. Also, for a given C rating and capacity, I found that the batteries are actually lighter than uh, what I've been using previously for the same capacity and C rating. So, not only was I getting good performance from the packs, I was getting a weight savings as well. So, it was a win-win in that respect. Now, as mentioned up front, I don't do extensive side-by-side -side testing. I simply use the packs in their intended use in my airplanes and see how they hold up as I fly and use them. Based on that, I can say that the Roaring Top packs have held up fantastically. I found that these packs would be the lightest of all the brands I've used to date for a given C rating, and I've used a number of different brands. Uh, the packs have also held up fantastically over numerous cycles since receiving them, where I've had other packs start to get a little soft over time as I use them. I have links to the description, so check them out if you're interested. You can get them at RC Jetworks uh, or at Roaring Top USA. You know, Andy at RC Jetworks is awesome, uh, and he'll certainly take care of you. I've been using the same packs for the last two years or more, uh, and they all still look like they're brand new. So now I can give away my old dead batteries free of charge. Okay, so one thing that is really worth talking about is C rating because I think there may be some misconceptions out there about this. Uh, for me personally, I primarily fly 35C packs and many folks are actually surprised by that. You know, the thing is just because you can get a 70C battery doesn't necessarily mean that's what you have to have for performance. I say that because yes, higher C rating does mean lower internal resistance in the battery, but it also means higher battery weight. First off, you know, what does C rating truly mean? Now, it's intended as a simplified metric to provide the maximum battery performance capability, how many amps you could pull and not completely destroy the battery. So let's say you have a 35C 5,000 milliampere hour pack uh, that means that the maximum recommended amperage for that pack is 175 amps. That's 35 times the capacity in amp hours. So now, if we have a 70C 5000 milliamp hour pack, that means a capability of 350 amps. The thing to keep in mind is that you know most of our electric setups aren't pulling anywhere near 175 amps, let alone 350. So obviously, you know, the closer you are to that maximum, then the less margin you'll have and the hotter the batteries will get and the more likely the battery will not hold up over time. So if you have a system pulling close to that max capability, then yeah, you definitely want to look at those higher C ratings uh, or a higher capacity battery. I do realize too that, you know, not all manufacturers accurately label their packs. Uh, so having margin is always a good thing. That said, a big part of this equation is battery capacity. So let's say you have a system that pulls 100 amps. The smaller capacity pack that you're using, you know, the higher C rating that you will need, 
You know, however, you can mitigate this with more capacity, which also increases your flight time, but also weight, right? So for me, I try to fly as high capacity as is practical in my airplanes to maximize the flight time. I rarely fly capacities less than 5,000 milliamp hours, you know, unless I'm flying smaller airplanes. So that is another reason why I lean towards the 35C packs. Uh, I don't have any airplanes pulling anywhere near 175 or more amps. Uh, you know, and it, like in the free wing jets, I'm flying uh, 5800s. In the larger jets, I'm using 6200s on up to 8000s, depending on the size of the airframe. You know, 8000s are ideal in a really large high powered EDF uh, if they will fit into the airframe and it can handle the weight. For a system pulling 120 amps or more, uh, you can get five plus minute flight times pretty easily with those really large capacity packs. One thing to keep in mind is that there is an optimal battery operating temperature, which is typically between 80 to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're outside that range, the batteries won't put out the power as well. Uh, and yes, you can have batteries that are too cold. Uh, I actually like to preheat my packs uh, by setting them on the dash of my car before my flights, this usually warms them up to a nice operating temperature for flying, especially on a sunny day. I can tell a notable difference between cold packs and pre-warmed packs in the aircraft performance, especially on the takeoff. One of the other things that I wanted to cover uh, were some best practices that have helped me get the most cycles from my LiPo batteries. It doesn't take much truthfully, but there's definitely some care and handling to ensure that you know the batteries hold up and stay reliable and safe for a long time. So mostly, I just have a couple recommendations that I want to mention. As we go through this though, you know my assumption is that you know how to handle and charge LiPos. However, I can't stress enough that you know a mistreated LiPo is an unsafe lipo that can result in fire. It's like when you're opening a can of pre-made biscuits, you know, you don't know when that thing is gonna blow. All right, so the one big recommendation I have is to never let your battery sit fully charged overnight. Lipo batteries don't like to sit in a fully charged state uh, so the least amount of time they can sit charged, the better they will perform and maintain balance over time. Also, they're more volatile fully charged, so it's safer too. For me, when I'm heading out to the field, I usually will get up early to charge the batteries while I get my gear together uh, and pack my car, and I'll charge at the field too. This alone has really extended the life of my batteries. This is especially important when you're dealing with lower cost battery brands as they usually aren't perfectly matched out of the box and they will get soft on you quicker from sitting fully charged. I've personally seen it happen. I've had batteries do that. The other recommendation is to always check the battery voltage after your flights uh, you know, to know just how low you're getting. Typically, anything above 3.7 volts per cell, you're good. Above 3.75 volts, even better. However, you know, if you're below 3.8 volts per cell, then I definitely recommend doing a storage charge on the batteries before packing them up for the day. It usually doesn't take that long and it is the best thing to do to help maintain battery performance. I've gotten into the habit of doing a storage charge on the batteries after each flying session since I always bring my charge setup with me to the field. The last thing is, even though you can charge at higher rates these days, I recommend always just charging at 1C, and this includes balance charging. If you have a good quality charger, you should be able to do a 1C balance charge in about 30 to 50 minutes, assuming that they're mostly balanced. The charger I have is the Revelectrix PowerLab Duo, which I absolutely love. Uh, with it, I'm able to parallel charge packs, even large capacity packs, uh, usually within 40 minutes or so, and even less if they're in a storage state. Uh, the charger has two sides to it, so I will parallel charge packs on each side. On a good day, I'll usually charge up to eight packs at once, four on each side. Obviously, you don't have to go overboard on the charger like I did, but I will say that one of the best investments you can make in this hobby is buying a good quality charger. And it is really nice to be able to balance charge a bunch of packs all at once in about 40 minutes. It saves me a ton of time. So the time to fun ratio is pretty good. All right guys, you know, I've been wanting to talk batteries for a while. 
Uh, so I'm glad I was finally able to make that happen. The best batteries are the ones you're happy with, uh, and I've been really happy with the Roaring Top packs, so be sure to check them out. Uh, the build quality is great, they are lightweight, and they put out fantastic power. The other part of this is battery care and handling. You know, treat the batteries right and they will take care of you. Most problems are a result of either overcharging or over discharging the batteries. So make sure you to always double check the charger shows the right cell count and double check your voltages. All right guys, that's it for this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. I have an article with links to everything on my blog, thercgeek.com. Uh, don't forget to subscribe. And if you'd like to see some of these batteries in action uh, in my kefir, you can see that here. Or if you'd like to see some of the other product reviews that we've done, you can see those down here. Thanks again, guys. And until next time, I'll see you at the field.